Greetings, YouTube. One of the things that capitalists are really good at is confusing the narrative. What do I mean by that? Well, there's such a thing as personal political freedoms, things that you and I enjoy. And then there's such a thing as corporate freedoms, the things that capitalists enjoy. And those are very different things. Your freedom of speech is something that can be exercised by a person. I have the right to speak freely. Now, since I am on a platform that is not run by the government, this platform can censor what I do and what I say because it is a private entity and the government is not involved in the restrictions of what I say here. The government cannot censor what I say publicly, but this is a private corporation. YouTube can do with it once with my content. And I understand that difference. Um, corporations have freedoms too. They don't enjoy freedom of speech the way we do though, because a corporation isn't a person. We treat them like people because we've confused the narrative. We've confused the personal freedoms with the corporate freedoms. And we started tra treating corporations like people. Corporations don't have freedom of speech. People have freedom of speech. A corporation is a piece of paper. I, I don't understand why more people don't grasp that. A corporation is a fiction. It is an artificial entity that we created, that we have allowed to come into being. And by granting a business license for that business to, to you know, that corporation to actually operate, um, we have granted that entity the right to do things, provide a service, produce a product, whatever, you know. But that business license is issued at the suffrage of the people because the people are the country. The people are the government. If the guy down the block who makes owns a sandwich shop wants a business license, we issue it. The government doesn't issue it. We, because we put that government to power, issue that business license. We allow that person to engage in business so long as they work within certain parameters, health and safety rules, you know, labor laws, things like that. The freedom of that person to do their job does not supersede ours. And people have confused the concept of, well, if that business can't do X, Y, or Z, that means it's imposing on your freedoms. And by doing that bit of flim-flam, they have then allowed the people to be manipulated and the corporations given even greater power and authority. I come to, comes to mind is the whole gay cake thing. A bakery didn't want to make a cake for a gay wedding. And, the, church, and the, church, the court said, okay, you know, you're right. You don't have to do that. Why did the court say that? Because we, the people, have allowed laws to be placed in, into power that can be interpreted in a way that allows that baker to say, no, no, I'm not going to make that cake for you because you're a gay person. But we allowed that to happen. It is no different than standing there and letting someone get beaten and not doing anything about it. If you stand there and you watch that happen and you don't intervene, you are complicit in that act of violence. You could have done something and you didn't. You chose to passively watch. And we posed, chose to passively sit back and pretend that that court didn't exist because of us. Pretend that the laws that were interpreted by that court didn't exist because of us. And so that baker was able to say, you don't get the cake because you're gay. And now trans people can't go to the bathroom in public. And drag queens can't perform in public. And very shortly, 
they're going to come for your kids because they are trans and they're going to take them away, which is the same thing they're talking about doing in some states right now, taking children away from their parents because their parents support their child's transition. It's all political. It's all connected. And we have gotten in this state because we have confused personal and corporate freedoms. And all of this is being manipulated by people for political gain. But all of these things are based on us. We are the government. We are the ones that put the people in power to do the things that need to be done. And we are responsible ultimately for those acts of violence against drag queens and gay people and trans kids and women who now can't get abortions in some states. And black people who can't vote because we've allowed laws to put in place that curtail their access to voting booths or drop boxes. We are responsible for that. Not some nebulous outside entity. And one of the ways that we've gotten where we are is because we have confused corporate and personal freedoms which have been, been manipulated by people who are trying to achieve political aims. They convinced you it was just about a gay cake. And then that precedent has helped us get to where we are now. Where gay people may not be able to buy houses because people don't want to spend them. spend uh, Allow them to spend money on, on a building in their neighborhood. Not in my backyard. Do we, I probably won't be calling this the red line anymore. That was aimed at black people. Maybe we should call this the rainbow line. Where only certain people are all little, allowed to live in neighborhoods if you know if they're cisgender and straight. We're going to make sure all the gay and the queer and the trans people live over there. Maybe we can start calling them rainbow ghettos. And we get here. Because we've been allowed, we've allowed ourselves to be manipulated by politicians behind the scenes who have used corporate law and personal law against us. Yeah, I know this is convoluted, but it's all connected. Nothing is ever in isolation. Always follow the money, always follow the motives, always try to extrapolate what can this be done what can we, how can this be used to hurt us? What can this thing do to us? What can we be, what can we, what can be done with this law in the future? And don't think that it's just pure speculation. Don't think, you know, that law could be conceivably used against somebody, but you know, it's not likely to have happened happen. because no, because the people that did that, that was their plan all along. The thing that you thought wasn't likely to occur was built into it from the beginning. Because most of us are decent human beings and we don't think others are going to act out of malice and hatred every single step of the time, step of the process, but they are. They are hateful bigots and they've found a way of getting themselves into positions of political and corporate power and they're using that against the people because we have confused Political and corporate freedoms. Personal and corporate freedoms. We've been duped. And it's time we stop. It's time we make sure that the corporations function like what they are. Fictions. It's time that the government starts reflecting the people. Not those in the behind the scenes who are trying to manipulate the system to keep it stay in power because their demographic is shrinking, literally dying off as time goes by. So I'm hoping the young folks can save our ass because without it, we're screwed. If the youth of America, everyone from 18 to 30, were to be registered and make sure they vote no matter what hurdles they have to get over, we could eradicate social conservatism in America in a single election cycle. Pfft, gone. We could get every single Republican out of power and then every single corporate Democrat out of power 
until we put democratic socialists in power. Until we people put people in power who are concerned about us and not legal fictions. But yeah, we allowed ourselves to have the personal and corporate freedoms become muddled and twisted and intertwined. And this is where we are. 